Hi, my name is Paul Friedman. I am the founder of the Marriage Foundation. And this video is about where your husband argues with you about everything. This, this is a complaint that I can verify all the way back to when I used to be a divorce mediator, which is what I did before I became a marriage healer. And I would have couples come in and it wasn't always the husband who did this, sometimes the wife, where no matter what was said, it just seemed like it had to be argued about. It just seemed like you, one of them was walking on eggshells. And in your case, where it's your husband who wants to argue about every little thing, I know you feel that way. I, I feel like... I'm walking on eggshells all the time. I can't breathe without him arguing with me. So let's take a look at the genesis of this, where it began, and let's come up with some good solutions that will help you get to the other side. Because you didn't get married to argue. You got married to be happy, right? You got married so that you would have a happy life with your soulmate. It's not too late. Now, this can spiral down, don't get me wrong. It has to be stopped. But you could be the one who puts the brakes on this. So, the genesis of this is that, and I'm not blaming you, but his frustration. We don't know why. It could just be a universal frustration, but he's frustrated. Nothing seems to be going well for him, at least in his marriage, where things really come to a head because it's two people living in a tight space. And I'm not just talking about physically. It's just two of you. And you're in what I call, and I want you to have, the sacred space of marriage. But too many people who start out as soulmates end up being cellmates. It's just no fun. Why? Oversensitivity, defensiveness. It isn't outer stuff, it's inner stuff. There's a lot you can do. You can ask yourself, what am I doing? that's triggering him. Not that it's your fault, but what can I do differently? How can I be more responsive to his needs, expressed and otherwise? Am I expressing my love? You can ask yourself. Or do I take him for granted? You know, universally, it is the number one killer of marriages, is that I call it over familiarity, where you start taking each other for granted and you become defensive at the slightest provocation. You become touchy, finicky, unrealistic that you're living with another human being who has flaws and you're saying, well, I have flaws too. Yes, but one of you has to stop the cycle of this back and forth. If he is arguing with you, it means you're arguing with him also. So one thing you could well, one thing you could do that's very effective is you could employ the stop method. So when he begins to argue based on whatever for whatever reason you stop. Don't say anything. You don't have to react. You don't have to respond. You don't have to give him an answer. You could just stop. And what I want you to do when you stop is pay attention. Don't pay attention to what he's saying. Pay attention to how your own mind is reacting. I guarantee you it's going to be resentful you may say it's confused, but it'll be resentful. That is what you have to stop. You have to stop being resentful 
towards him for what is a flaw. And honestly, in this day and age, it's a very common flaw. Who doesn't argue all the time? We see it on TV, in the movies, we see it among our friends, we see it wherever we go, in Starbucks, we always see arguments. You stop, just stop. There's no requirement that you have to fulfill to react, to respond, to give back, nor do you have to calm him down. That's not your job. If he's letting loose, that's his anger, that's his frustration, it's his problem. You see, anger and frustration is a universal thing that happens to all of us because it's instinctive. It's sort of like the first trigger that comes up because we have a drive to survive and we need to make sure that whatever we do, based on the drive to survive, and not us, but the mind, is going to be very well prepared to save our life, even though our life doesn't need saving, because we have evolved far beyond that. But that trait is still there and it comes out as anger. And so, because we're human beings, we're far above our animal bodies, we're souls, we need to stop the mind when it starts behaving like an animal. You cannot stop your husband's mind. That's his mind, but you can stop yours. So this is the first and the most vital step is to not react to his reactions. And if you miss the boat, which you will in the beginning, it's not too late because you become like a ping pong ball in these scenarios. And at some point you just go, whoa. And then you could even employ the I'm sorry method. Doesn't mean you're necessarily sorry because you didn't do anything but you're sorry, you feel compassion. I'm sorry, let's talk later. Can I get you something? Can I get you a glass of water? Can I get you a cheese sandwich? Calm yourself, withdraw from the cycle, relax, let your shoulders relax, breathe. Be you, don't be you the mind, be you the soul. So hopefully this is helpful. If not, and you want to write in to one of our counselors, please do so. If you want to look through all of that we have, you know, we're a little bit different. We don't use traditional counseling methods because frankly, they don't work. When I used to be a divorce mediator, I got all my business from therapists who failed. And so the way we approach things is very differently. I see marriage as a very spiritual, very lofty event in your life that can take you very far. And remember, you're supposed to be happy. That's why you got married. And, that's, and you should be doing everything you can to make each other happy. And happy, I mean every single day of your life, happier. Love is a beautiful thing. It's not just a song. All right. God bless you. God bless your husband. God bless your family. And if you want to leave a comment, leave a comment. If you want to like um, this video, please do so. Subscribe. We care for you. We care about you. God bless.